Whether you're the sysadmin or an incident responder called in to evaluate whether a Linux system has been hacked, one of the things you want to look for is privilege escalation by the bad guy. One of the ways that they do this is to use the sudo command to perform tasks which are only reserved to the root user or their designees. In this video, we will look at what traces are left behind on a Linux system when the sudo command is run either successfully or unsuccessfully. As we have seen in this other video, only certain users are allowed to perform the sudo command. So let's take a look at an example when an unauthorized user tries to use sudo. I'm going to do sudo cat slash etsy slash ipsec.secrets. And then I'll be prompted for the password. I'm going to go ahead and enter the password for this account demo. And then I see that we get this error that tells us that the user demo is not in the sudo file and it won't let us read the file. And it also tells us that the incident has been reported to the administrator. We will get to where that's logged in just a minute. But before that, let's try to use sudo again. But this time I will type in the wrong password three times. So once again, I'm going to do sudo cat slash etsy slash ipsec.secrets. And after I type in the wrong password three times, I will get the message that three incorrect password attempts have been made and that the cat command has failed. The error does not tell us explicitly, but you bet that this is also getting logged. So where is this actually getting logged to? The information of which user who tried to run the command at what time, etc., will all be logged into a file. The location of that file would depend on the distro that you are running. If you are on a Fedora or CentOS system, then the log file is generally slash var slash log slash secure. If you are on a Debian or Ubuntu system, then the log file is generally slash var slash log slash off.log. But the log location can also be customized in the slash etsy slash sudo file. On my parent OS system where systemd is running, I can see the logs with the journal ctl command. And the parameter that I want to give the journal ctl command is the command that I am interested in, which in this case is sudo. So I'm going to do journal ctl and then sudo. And what I get back is a failure to add match error because we actually need to specify the full path name of sudo. So to get that, we can just type the which command for sudo, and then we get slash user slash bin slash sudo as the full path name. So let's run journal ctl command with the full path name of sudo. So I'm going to do journal ctl slash user slash bin slash sudo. And now we get some output. We also get this thing that says hint, you are currently not seeing messages from the other users and the system. And it tells us that users in the groups named ADM and systemd-journal can see all the messages. That's fine for now as I'm just showing you what the output is from this demo account looks like. But if you want to truly check out all the sudo logs, you should really be doing this journal CTL command with an account that is in one of those two groups. And to see which account is in those groups, we can do a grep of the slash etsy group file for those group names. So I can do grep-e adm-e systemd-journal slash etsy slash group. And we see that the account named Blue Monkey Forensics is in the adm group. So we should run the journal ctl command as that user to see everything. And like I said, we won't do that for this demo as it's actually going to give us too much output. So speaking of output, one thing about journal CTL is that by default, it paginates the output. So we don't see all the text depending on the window size and uh, text size, etc. So to overcome that, I will add the dash dash no pager option and then run it again. So journal CTL slash user slash bin slash sudo dash dash no dash pager. So now we can see all the text for each entry. 
as opposed to the clipped one that we saw before, right? On the right-hand side of the window, every line just gets clipped. So let's look at what we have. In this entry, it is recording that at this time, there was an authentication failure which means that the user was not able to provide the correct password. And the user that got the authentication failure was named demo, and they were on tty slash dev slash pts slash three. For a tutorial on virtual terminals, watch this video up here. And on the subsequent lines, we see that the demo user who is not in the sudoers file was trying to be root and running the command cat slash etsy slash ipsec.secrets. And they were doing it from the folder named slash home slash demo. Now what I'm gonna do is log into the system using the Blue Monkey Forensics account, which is part of the ADM group. So now when I look at the logs, I see all the results, right? So I'm gonna do journal CTL slash user slash bin slash sudo dash dash no dash pager. The output will contain all log entries related to sudo, regardless of the user, and it's going to date back to when this log file uh, kept track. And let's go ahead and ignore the events that happened before my last reboot, because that's just too much. So we can see here that the account Blue Monkey Forensics had executed as root the command grep, and they did it from the working directory of slash var slash log. In the next line, we see that the command was a sudo command because it says that the session was opened and noticed the execution was the same. The third line of the sequence, which also had the same timestamp, shows that the sudo session was closed. This was because the grep command ran and then it completed very quickly. In the next block of this log, we see that the Blue Monkey Forensics user executed as root the command named journal CTL from the working directory of slash var slash log. And we see once again that the sudo session opening at the same timestamp. The third line this time has a different timestamp for the session closing. And that's because the command was journal CTL and the output of that command was paginated. So the user can see the multiple pages of the output and they can go up and down uh, that output. And only when I quit the journal CTL program did the sudo session actually end. That's why there is a different timestamp. In the next block of the log, we see that the Blue Monkey Forensics user executed as root the command of su dash. And they did this from the working directory of slash var slash log. And we see in the next line that the sudo session opened. Now the next few lines show the actions of the root user after the su command. Notice that the user is now running in the sudo terminal one instead of zero, where Blue Monkey Forensics was running from. The working directory is now also changed to slash root, which is the home folder of the root user. That makes sense as we did the substitute user command with the dash option which starts the shell as a login shell instead of just switching users. And the command that was run was su user, but because the system doesn't have a user named user, that's su command aired out. Notice the timestamp for the next two lines being the same, right? The session opened and then it closed instantaneously. And then you can see here that what I did next was I typed the su demo command and that executed fine as the account name demo did exist. And I typed in the correct password. At this point, remember that I attempted to cat the file named uh, etsy slash ipsec.secrets and I got the warning that the demo user is not in the sudoers file. So this is where it's logged. Then what I did next was try the sudo cat command again, but this time I typed in the wrong password three times on purpose. This line in the log reflects that as an authentication failure. And up here, you can see that when I use the Blue Monkey Forensics account to perform a sudo task, and then I enter the password incorrectly, the error gives us another line of information that this account, which does have sudo privileges, had three incorrect password attempts. 
So it seems like it treats accounts that have privileges and accounts that don't have privileges a little bit differently. All right, we have seen in this video that any executions of the sudo command gets logged by the system. Successful sudos are logged and a corresponding session opened and session closed times are recorded. If a user who does not have root privileges attempt to perform a sudo, that event is logged. The difference is the name of the errors being the user is not in the sudoers file or authentication failure, which corresponds respectively to the correct or incorrect password being typed in. This may be an important thing to be aware of if you are a sysadmin or defer analyst, as having excess sudo failures from unprivileged users may be a clue that your system is being hacked, and it can help you determine whether unwelcomed intruders have been attempting to perform privilege escalation on your systems. I know that you will enjoy another Linux forensics video like this one here. Click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.